These data were measured from a silicon dioxide material using a Kratos instrument and therefore to quantify these data we are going to load the library that is appropriate for a 60 degree angle between the x-ray source and the analyzer and we're going to have a, the escape depth correction so I'm selecting the element library and loading the, that library and having done so if I then put on the peaks that I'm interested in as markers and then create regions based on that let's just verify and let's just give a little tweak to that carbon so this does two things first of all we can look at the ratio of oxygen to silicon so I've created a, a report here where when I these numbers here will be the ratio of the other elements with respect to silicon and you can see the oxygen is a roughly two so that would be consistent with silicon dioxide the other thing that you can see here is that although we are getting a reasonable quantification for silicon dioxide we are also seeing about 16 percent being reported as carbon now the carbon is an, a contamination layer and the fact that it's 16 percent is more to do with the fact that it, it's at the surface because it's at the surface XPS 7 sensitivity is disproportionately promoting the amount of carbon in the in this quantification report having looked at a material which should be silicon dioxide albeit with a contamination layer now let's look at a sample that has an intentional overlayer deposited these are now the same silicon dioxide substrate but with a PP hex overlayer of over a range of different thicknesses that have produced as you can see the silicon and the oxygen peaks that's for a thin one but when you look at a thick layer of PP hex and we compare those you can see that the second one with a 20 nanometer thickness of PP hex on the silicon dioxide you can see almost no evidence I'll put them back together again so you can have a look at the way it reflects the background there's almost no evidence whatsoever of a silicon peak and that's because the silicon has been attenuated to the point that you can't see it anymore so we certainly wouldn't be able to measure sil silicon dioxide from this 20 nanometer thick layer but what about some of these other ones if I display now the, the slightly thicker one versus a 6 nanometer one you can see that what we have is again you can clearly see an attenuation of the silicon signal and the promotion of a peak that is coming from uh, the overlayer let's quantify these then and again let's first of all calibrate them so that we can make sure that when I propagate the regions are reasonable so let's do that and apply and then I will propagate the processing and you can see that they have lined up now I can now create a set of regions and then propagate them without any fear that the backgrounds will be poorly defined so let's bring up the element library and find the peaks and let's say create regions let's just verify since I'm going to propagate and they look good so let's just propagate the I don't need to propagate the processing just the regions and the annotation table and again what we can see is the amount of carbon is increasing this amount of carbon is increasing with each layer of thickness that's as we'd expect now let's see what's happening to the ratio of silicon to oxygen 
So select the silicon, ratio the other elements to silicon. Uh, this is the formula here. So when I press the area report, what we can now look at is the oxygen ratio to silicon. Silicons come out as 1, therefore these are now ratioed to silicon, and it's roughly 2. And then with each depth, the ratio of the oxygen to the silicon has diminished. Apart from these last two where there's absolutely no silicon or oxygen from the silicon dark side and therefore the quantification here is, is complete rubbish so we don't need to worry about those but we can see that over at least these thicknesses here we have a, a diminishing ratio. So even when you have a good library and a good set of transmission correction and other uh, adjustments to the data you can still end up with ratios for materials that are dictated by the in-depth distribution rather than the actual chemical composition of, this, of the material.